Right, we're live. Thaddeus, uh, let's start in Greek first so we could uh, greet uh, the viewers who are Greek speaking, they will speak in English. Mazimas Simera or Thaddeus McFadden. Καλάθος φεριστής, ο οποίος αγωνίζεται στη Ισπανία εδώ και λίγο διάστημα. Πολύ γνωστό στην Κύπρο, αγωνίστηκε στην Πετρολίνα ΕΚ, προηγουμένως στον ΑΠΟΕΛ. Πήρε τρία πρωταθλήματα Κύπρου, αγωνιζόμενος στο νησί μας. Ένας καλός φεριστής που τα τελευταία χρόνια διαπρέπει στην Ευρώπη, στο Basketball Champions League και στις διοργανώσεις που μετέχουν οι ομάδες του. Thaddeus, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, yes. Although from a distance, obviously, because of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're social distancing and from some uh, lanes as well. We're in Cyprus, mm -hmm. you're in Spain, correct? Yes, yes. So where are you? How, how, is, how is the situation in Spain? Where exactly are you? How are you holding up these days? Uh, well, as of right now, I'm in Bilbao, uh, with a friend. Um, the situation is basically the same. Um, they, they want to continue the season, you know, but... Uh, like we were supposed to start practice on Monday, but you know um, the governor extended it, so we're going to start next Monday. And you know, you never know; it may get extended again. Um, what I'm thinking is, I hope not, because I do want to continue the season. But I think the season will be canceled. But mm -hmm. you know, you I, I don't think anyone knows what's next. You know, so yeah. I'm just in by ear. <laughs> So uh, before I ask you about the season, uh, what what are the plans and everything which you mentioned? How have you been uh, going in these last few weeks? I guess you're you're stuck at home because I know in Spain the the measures yes. are very strict. Mm -hmm. So what have you been doing? And you said you're in Bilbao, that's uh, up in the Basque country, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, okay. I play I play for you know a team in Burgos, uh, but you know, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm just with a friend here, uh, Bilbao, Jalen Brown. He plays for the team here. So, um, but yeah the 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 situation is just you know um with the whole yeah. billball thing the situation is just you know i know they say like social distancing but like it's just tough you know because you know you send your family home mm -hmm. and you know uh only thing you can do is work out really i mean that's that's good i work out i watch a lot of netflix uh yeah. talk to family facetime um it's it's, it's It's tough. It's tough. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, you know, safety of the people is the most important. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't I mean, it's boring and it's tough, you know, um, to be away from basketball so long. This is probably the longest I have been away from basketball. You know, um, I haven't yeah. I haven't shot a ball in so long, you know, mm -hmm. so this is this is definitely different for me. But, you know, the safety of the people is more important. So uh, whatever is good, the best thing to do at this time, I'm I'm down for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, l let's talk a little bit more about your days in Spain. Uh, how exactly were your days, your day-by-day -day, uh, procedure in Spain? Were you locked up at home? Were you able to go outside at all? Oh uh, yeah, we can go. We can go outside. Um, you know, um, of mm -hmm. course, many things not open. Yeah. But you know, you, you can have deliveries. Um, um, you can go to the store to buy food. Uh, the, all the pharmacies are open. Mm -hmm. You know, and now, you know, they're slowly opening up a little bit more things, you know, as they go into phase, I think they said zero, phase one or zero, as they say. Mm -hmm. So things are like slowly opening back up, but it's not many, many places open. Just like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure all over the world. So, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Just, just want to... Just want to give a heads up. So, sorry, Thaddeus. Uh, people for watching us, they are free to ask any questions they want to you on the public chat, and we will make yeah, sure we only, give you the only, questions. Only in English, though, because I don't understand. I I could translate. Don't worry. On the side. <laughs> as long as it's not in Mandarin, I could translate. Don't worry. I'll, I'll try my best in any language I can recognize to translate for you. So, uh, Thaddeus. All right. So, uh, what about the rest of the season? The season has been left in the middle. I see that uh, you're 23 games. Mm -hmm. Then your team is playoff position, but also the, the basketball champions league, which has been postponed till next October, mm -hmm. which means that um, uh, Burgos won't play, uh, will play in the final eight, which will take place some point in October or, or the mm -hmm. beginning of September. So what exactly mm -hmm. are the plans in the club? How is the uh, organization discussing uh, the next day after this pandemic slowly well, passes? Uh, well, of course, you know, the club wants to continue the season, you know, of course, the ACB season, because it's, it's a great opportunity for us because it's it's like a March Madness, you know, uh, any team can beat any team in Spain, you know, mm -hmm. the first place yeah. team can lose to the first place team. So now, you know, the championship is really up for grabs, 
you know, anybody can really win it, you know, any given day. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we're, the team really want to push to do that because, you know, of course our opportunities to go far is good. And far as the basketball champions league, it's, it's tough because, you know, um, you're going to play next year, but maybe you don't have the same players, you know, so it's, yeah. it, it's tough, but, um, but I mean, I respect the decision of the basketball champions league, you know, it's better safe than sorry, you know, and I also expect to sit, uh, respect the decision of the ACB. You know, um, because I, mm -hmm. I, do, I do want to get back to plan and I trust their judgment. So uh, we'll see. But, yeah, I feel like it's going to be really tough to not have, uh, you know, the, like basketball champions league to not have the players that yeah. you, you know, made it that far with, you know, because it's definitely going to be a dis different roster. So but yeah. all in all, like I said, just to just just the safety of everything, if it, I'm, I'm with that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's, it beats uh, the league or the championship to be outright uh, cancelled, uh, as, in the, as, yes, is, sure, as it is sure. the case in some other leagues around the world. So even gave the chance to play at the end of the season. And even if you're not mm -hmm. with a club back then, I'm sure they'll have a medal for you winning if the team doesn't make yeah, it. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how is life in normal circumstances in Spain for you? How are you spending your time in Spain? It's cool. It's cool. Of course, I, um, my family travel with me. So, you know, I'm always with my family. I just had a, a son, you know, he's eight mm -hmm. months. So, you know, just wow. basically spending time with my family. If I'm not playing basketball, uh, I'm not a person that go out too much. So I'm, I'm more of a home type person. So if I'm not playing basketball, I'm either at home, just uh, relaxing with my family, you know, especially with me having a newborn, you know, yeah. and uh, uh, we're, you know, getting married soon. So, you know, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a, uh, a family guy, you know, so I'm just mm -hmm. hanging out. Great. So it's it's most it's the court and home and uh, not much in between, I guess. Hey, that's, <laughs> that's the life. You you lived you lived in I think it's in the, the Canary Islands, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Badalona, and now in Burgos. Which was the best part of Spain from those three the areas? The best place yeah. to live. The place. Yeah. Place to live is okay. Of course, you know the Canary Islands because it's it's summer basically all year around. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you know, of course, my favorite, and not just saying that I play, not just saying that because I play there now. You know, my favorite team I have played for to this point, you know, is Burgos because, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, all the other places was really good too. It was great organizations. You know, all the teams in Spain are great organizations. You know, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, Burgos is like a family net place. You know, uh, win, lose, or draw. You know, they, they're the same. So, um, mm -hmm. and I'm like a family person. So, you know, um, I really love. You know basketball in Burgos, you know, yeah. living wise, mm -hmm. you know, Canary Islands is like hot all year. So living Canary <laughs> yeah. Islands, uh, basketball wise, you know, even I love the city in Burgos as well. And, you know, the people are, you know, um, are mm -hmm. awesome in Burgos as well. I Perfect. don't know if you catch some of the games, but every game is sold out. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's great. Well, the, the, the Spanish league is considered probably the best second league in the world after the nba is that something that you could confirm is that something that you witnessed mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure for sure um every year you either have someone that's going to the nba or uh believe it that play several years in the nba uh uh you know every team at least have a couple players that played nba or, you know on their roster so yes i i can definitely uh confirm that that i think you know um mm -hmm. acb yearly is definitely um uh, to yeah. second on nba so you've been to a few countries, you in, in, in Europe, and uh, after leaving the States, I, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's uh, the big, the ones we know for the bigger ones, the, the level-wise, are, of course, Germany, Greece, and Spain, and France. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've also been to a few other countries, Cyprus as well. We're going to come to that in a few moments. Um, mm -hmm. How do you feel about your journey so far in basketball? I love it. I love it. Um, you know, I, I started off in the second division, Czech Republic. I was, like, the only American you know, mm -hmm. making pennies, but, you know, just my love for the game and, you know, also opportunity to travel the world. But the journey has been great. I feel like, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people nowadays, you know, um, that start off in like lower leagues or, you know, that's trying to get advice, you know, come to me for advice and tell me, like, how did I get through things and everything? I mean, I'm not going to say the whole journey was perfect because, you know, I'm a competitor and, you know, I want to play against the best, you know, and yeah. obviously that didn't start off at the beginning. But, you know, I uh, just kept at it for the love of the game and worked my way up. And, you know, hopefully I keep going. You know, I'm still not satisfied. You know, I mm -hmm. still think, you know, I definitely can do better, you know, um, you know okay. and get better as well. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, I'm happy and I'm happy, you know, at where the place I'm at mm -hmm. now. So, 
but yeah, uh, it's been great. It's been great. I think the best part is just giving out advice to other players that's, you know, following the same footsteps because it's a lot of players out there that's really good, you know, that can play at the early level, but just don't have the right representation to, you know, yeah. get there, you know, so you know, I, I feel like that's the best part of my journey. It's just mm -hmm. teaching and, and, you know, giving people my experience about it. What do you want to accomplish from now on? Uh, because you did mention that you want to even uh, reach even higher. So what are your aspirations uh, for the next years to come? Uh, to be honest with you, um, you know, the team I'm on now, we're negotiating, you know, for next season and I love it. And, you know, also I, I would love to return, you know, to there, you know, the place is great. I wouldn't mind uh, finishing my career there. But that being said, you know, I'm also a competitor. And, you know, I know I can compete, you know, even at the EuroLeague level. Mm -hmm. And I won't, you know, um, obviously, if I get opportunity, I will take advantage of it, you know, of the opportunity. Because, you know, my whole career has yeah. been like that. You know, someone say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. And, you know, I've been proven wrong. So I just feel mm -hmm. like um, if, if you're going to be in this game, you, you want to be, you know, play against the best. So I feel like, you know, I can't play against the best, and that would be my goal. But at the same time, if not, you know, um, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy, but you know, also, I, I want to play against the best. Mm -hmm. um, all right, and uh, can we talk a little bit about Greece? Because you know, in Cyprus, we follow the Greek league a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. We're pretty, pretty good fans of that league. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you spent some time in Balk in Thessaloniki, then you went to Kimi. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. how, how was that experience? Oh, it was great. Uh, I love Greece. I love Greece. Uh, you know, till this day, you know, uh, I say, you know, um, I, I get the most. You know, inboxes from fans from Greece and Cyprus still to this day. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I loved it out there in Greece. You know, Greece is very beautiful. Everywhere we went in Greece was beautiful. Uh, the basketball yeah. obviously is great. Uh, good competition as well. You know, we know some of the financial things that's going on. But my opinion, I feel like if the financial things was not going on, I feel like Greece will definitely be like top three, you know, basketball in the, you know, in the world because mm -hmm. it's, it's great talent it's great talent it's just you know the financial problem that's going on now is kind of hurting it but still overall it's, it's it, it was it was a great thing for me you know it was, it was another stepping stone for me it really boosted my career as well so uh, i have nothing but great experience about greece mm -hmm. uh I'd, I'd like to ask you a few questions about cyprus you came to cyprus i think it was 2013 for up oil um mm -hmm. you won the championship if i'm not mistaken that year uh, mm -hmm. against Ike at the finals that's the mm -hmm. was pretty pretty interesting series and he went to Ike for another couple of years mm -hmm. I think he won three yeah. titles in three years um, yes. if I ask you to give me one thing that you take away from Cyprus from those three years here at the island which what, uh, what, what is it just you know every year I learned something new you know uh different and I just learned uh you know my first year when I was with Apple well from coach and Tonis and if I, if I, if, you know, I'm, it's difficult sometimes for me to pronounce names. So if I say someone's name like wrong, we'll I'm forgive sorry. you. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Coach Antonis, uh, you know, uh, when I first got there, you know, I was a player that just was figuring out like, you know, what can I do? I know I'm a good player, but I just haven't got the opportunity. Right. You know, and then he gave me mm -hmm. that opportunity just to prove myself. And, you know, I learned from him, and that was great. And then, you know, my second year, I, I went with Ike, with Coach um, George. I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like him at first at all. But at the end, you know, I learned a lot from him. And then, um, you know, uh, Coach Linos with Ike, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with Coach Linos, me and him, his relationship is great. You know, we, he's coach, but he's like a like a best friend to me. And I learned so much from him. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, I have so much respect for him and him telling me, I remember we sat down and he told me that, you know, you know, you can play at the highest level. You know, I, I already, I believed I could, but just hearing it from him because, you know, on the outside, mm -hmm. you know, I also heard, I'm not going to say any names, but on the outside, I heard that, you know, uh, I wouldn't be able to do better than Cypress. So I should stay here, you know, even though I love Cypress, but like I said, I was a competitor and I want to play against the yeah. So yeah, of hearing from Coach Linos, you know, he's telling me, you um, you know, he would love to have me back, but he was like, man, you know, you're a great player and I feel like that you can play at a really high level. And, you know, just hearing that from him, uh, man, that just gave me even more just confidence because, you know, I trust mm -hmm. his word and everything and just learning do from you, him as do well. Speak well. With Lino? Do you speak with Lino Sadol now? Because, you know, he's in Greece. Uh, he's oh, also coaching the, the national team. Yeah, we speak all the time. I, I, I speak with Coach all the time. You know, uh, 
mm-hmm. like that's going to be a relationship forever. You know, uh, like I said, so, you know, you know, uh, I had all great yeah. coaches. I had many great coaches in my coaching career, you know, um, you know, and to mm-hmm. this day, but you know, me and his relationship is so close and I have so much respect for him and I definitely wouldn't mind playing with him, you know, again before retiring. So, and then, you know, uh, I have a funny story, you know, about Abuel. You know, I love yeah. you know, Abuel. We won a championship. So, you know, I wanted to return back for the following season, but, you know, they wanted to go a different route, you know, uh, my position. So, you know, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't hold, I don't hold any grudges or anything, you know, I'm, I'm a competitor. So I just looked at it as an, okay, well, you know, I'm gonna go somewhere else and, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna battle, you know? So I just looked at it yeah. at that. And then, you know, I, I went to Ike, you know, with Andreas, you know, the president Andreas. Uh, and mm-hmm. I also know the captain from when I played for Apple. Well, we used to talk a lot on the court, you know, we used to talk trash, but you know, it was good, friendly trash. The, our, our Jacobos, Jacobos Pandeli, the captain. Yeah. I, I call him, I call him uh, captain Jack. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so, um, so yeah, so, I, I, without the crazy beard though, without the crazy yeah, beard, then. Without <laughs> the other Captain Jack. Yeah. yeah, he's crazy. He's a crazy guy, but man, I love him. I love him. So, you know, just hearing from him and then the president Andres and, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wanted to get revenge on Op Well as well, you mm-hmm. know, for not taking me back. So, but I still love Op Well as well. You know, they did a lot for my career as well, but you know, as a competitor, I just wanted to get revenge on them and yeah. You know, luckily we did, but you know, I have great respect for that organization as well, too. So, how, how did you how did you witness the uh, the tension and the the competitiveness in Cyprus? Because you know sometimes things can get a little bit rough uh, mm-hmm. here in Cyprus. So, how, how did you experience uh, those seasons in Cyprus? You know, those uh, the tension, there's full stadiums in the playoffs and everything. Mm-hmm. How was that for you? Um, it was it was great. I actually love it. I love it. You know the pressure. You know, um, when I was with Apple Well, we were the favorite to win. Well, us and Ike was the favorite to win. Then when I went to Ike, yeah. you know, we were a heavy favorite to win as well. So you know the pressure of if you be, if you're in third place, it's a failure of a season. You know, or even mm-hmm. second, it's a failure. So just just you know having that pressure, I actually liked it. I feel like you know. Um, of course, you you know you have a, a bad game here or there, and someone says something bad or anything like that. But that's basketball. But you know, the, uh, even at both places, I remember playing at Apple Well, um, Game Five of the Finals. That was like till this mm-hmm. point, that was pr- probably the craziest atmosphere I ever played in. <laughs> you know, okay, I played yeah. I played in front of like more people, but just not that loud. You know, and then you know the following year for mm-hmm. Ike, it was the same. So yeah, I. Uh, you know, um, I I actually watch a couple of games in Cyprus now, and I I look and I say, oh man, it's not that many people like in the crowds like you know it was like when we were playing, and I was mm-hmm. just like, man, it was just, but it was just so amazing. It was just so amazing, and like I said, till this day, I still talk to fans outside there. But it was it was it was pressure, but it was good pressure to me. Which was the loudest stadium you've played in in your? Career, you don't have to well, say it, Lift Kofi. You could to the, the loudest, uh, not the biggest. No, the loudest, the loudest in my whole career. Mm-hmm. Uh, was yeah, Partizan. Partizan. Oh, I played with oh, okay, yeah, I we yeah, beat them. That was it. Was so I, re- I remember we were winning by two, no, yeah, two points. And our captain went to the free throw line. And I remember like they were so loud. Like, I remember mm-hmm. I, had to, I had to keep doing this, like, to like my ears kept plugging. And yeah. we end up winning that game, but I I walked out with just like wow, like that the was crazy. At least. That was a crazy <laughs> atmosphere. But uh, yeah. far as like loudness, I would say partisan. But not just saying this because this is my team I'm on now. But I would say the best fans I would say is Burgos because like mm-hmm. it's it's loud every game. You you sold out every game. Um, win, lose, or draw because you know in other countries you lose fans may not come to the games like that anymore. Or if like at Pauk, uh, you know, the fans in Pauk is great, but you know, sometimes when we don't play like the big teams, like when we play the big teams, the games are packed. But if we play lower level teams, you know, it's not yeah, so packed. But like at Burgos, every game is packed. And if you lose, they mm-hmm. still gonna come. You can lose every game. They're still gonna come to the game. And like I said, I, I think it was voted best fans in Spain, like two years in a row. Wow. Uh, you know, we broke the Champions League record for a regular season game as fans. So uh, I'm going to say the loudest was partisan and crazy because, you know, like on that side of the country, the fans are like 
I hate to say it like crazy. You know, they throw things. Yeah. They oh, I know. Yeah, I know. And everything. And like more like on Spain, France, and that side, they're more like mellow. Like they 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 will get rowdy, but they're mellow. They won't throw anything or, you know, cuss you out or anything like that. So. Um, the east, you, the more east you go in Europe, the crazier the fans get. That's my experience. Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. true. All right. So, uh, Thad, just one more, one more question about Cyprus. Uh, when are you coming back to the island? Oh, at man, least I as a tourist. To I would at least to as a tourist. I, I told, I told my, um, I told my wife that you know we definitely have to go back, even if I have just a visit. You know, um, that go back, and I have many friends there to this day. You know, uh, yeah, we did, and the islands is just it's beautiful. It's it's a nice island. I love the island. So, uh, and we definitely gonna before I retire, you know, uh, we're definitely gonna come back and uh, visit the island. You're more than welcome. You know that here you have a lot of friends here in Cyprus. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we'd love to see you back some point. Uh, I noticed you've uh, you have a Georgian a Georgian passport. How how did that happen? Mm -hmm. What's the story behind uh, that? Well, you know. Um, our, our coach is, is Greek as well. Um, so, you know, my agent, you know, uh, Alex, uh, you know, um, that's who mm -hmm. I was with in Cyprus as well. And, you know, we're still like best friends to this day. His name, Alex, and I would try his last name, but I know I'm going to destroy it. So I'm not going to try it. So, but Alex, mm -hmm. so, um, you know, um, he helped me out a lot at the whole um, situation. Um, out there so um hold, hold on mm -hmm. one second i'm sorry yeah okay hello yeah we're yeah, still so here don't he, worry he, uh, he, he it happens me. in live yeah. interviews don't worry. so <laughs> sorry, what I, exactly I, happened I yeah you're saying so you he, uh, uh, how did i'm sorry what was the question again <laughs> i was i was asking about the georgian passport how did that happen oh yes how, okay how? yes um my, yeah. uh he, alex helped me out because uh he you know, uh, like I said, we close and he has done a lot for me in my career as well. You know, someone I respect a lot in the game, someone that had big beliefs in me, big trust in me. So he put in, you know, a good recommendation for me with coach, you know, um, that um, coach for the national team. So, uh, you know, he helped me out with that. And, you know, the coach liked my game. And obviously, yeah, Ilya, Ilya, Ilya Zuros is the name. Ilya yeah. Zuros. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, uh, coach, he actually, um, um, you know, uh, saw me play like my game and things like that. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I, it, it's been a blessing plan for him as well. You know, uh, it, it's funny. Mm -hmm. I say like, you know, uh, I had great experience with Greek and Cypriot coaches, you know, uh, yeah. you know, they just, you know, so he, well, he's enough when I yeah. let me play my game and he helps me out a lot. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it okay. was just there. Uh, that's another when was the last time you coach. played for the the Georgian national team? When did you play last we played, time? We played we played three months ago in Georgia. Uh, we played against Switzerland and and Serbia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm actually picking up right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we end up we end up winning both of those games, you know. And you know, us beating Serbia was pretty big for the country, you know. So mm -hmm. it, it was pretty cool. So what, what do you think you could do? Could you qualify for uh, maybe the Eurobasket with uh, Georgia? Is that the uh, goal? Yes, that's the goal. Um, honestly, we um, well, we already qualified because we're hosting it. But I oh still yeah, think yeah, of course. My my mistake. Yeah. Yes, one of the four countries hosting the group stage, of course. Yeah. yeah. But I still think even with that, you know, our goal because you know they asked me did I want to come play even though you know it was for no reason, but. Like I said, they they coach, you know, I respect coach a lot. You know, I love playing with him. Um, I learn a lot from him, even if we with each other for a little time. So, you know, I'm I'm 32, but I, I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, the fans in Georgia, they they are really prideful, hardworking country. So, uh, you know, I just feel yeah. like even though I didn't have to come because we're playing for no reason, but just for the simple fact that, that they helped me, you know, do this and give me a passport and welcome me in. So I, I went there. You know, knowing that, and also, mm -hmm. you know, um, we just don't. Coach told me that okay, we're playing for no reason, but we still want to compete and show, you know, the country, you know, show the, you know, show Europe that Georgia, you know, is is here yeah. to play. So uh, it was easy for me to go well, back, but you know, Georgia does have a tradition in basketball. As as a former Soviet country, they do love sports. Mm -hmm. I actually been to Tbilisi once, and uh, I was surprised how 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 much they love their sports. So I'm not surprised mm -hmm. here. I wish you all the best with that country. 
And uh, just to let the people watching know that uh, it, it's, it's a usual practice in Europe to get overseas athletes with uh, passports. It helps the athletes, of course, and it helps the countries to get better. Cyprus mm -hmm. also enjoyed uh, a few Americans play for our national team. So, you know, it's something that happens. And uh, it's great to hear that you have also a second goal in your career besides the club uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a question by Gostandinos asking about uh, about uh, Ike. Uh, which was your best appearance with Ike? The best game, the best moment with the team from Larnaca? Um, I think it was our first, our first win in FIBA Cup when we played against. I want to say it was Pristina. I and think it was Pristina. Yes, I remember I playing yes. Pristina, but I don't know if that's and in I the game. Like before. you know, okay, like I say, like I'm, I, I love winning. Um, I think the last time I haven't made like the playoffs was maybe. I can't even remember. So I love winning, you know, and everything. But I, I, you know, so I don't talk about individual stats much. But you know, that was memorable because I think I hit like eight threes in the first half, you mm -hmm. know. And like I said, it was the first win for the club, like, uh, like European wise. So it was. I feel like that was one of, the, and of course, the championships as well. You know, yeah. okay, the championships mean more. It meant more. But you know, just to show that, you know, I feel like we showed that Cypress is not like how everybody thought, you know, I felt like, you know, we had, you know, like, like us, Kev knows we had uh Polan, uh, we had, we had some really, you know, solid teams in Cypress and, mm -hmm. and I feel like, you know, people was just looking over Cypress and, but we proved that, you know, like we, we won some pretty big games. We beat an Italian team, you know, we, we, mm -hmm. you know, we made it to the playoffs. So we proved that, you know, you can't overlook anyone. Yeah. Just, just a follow-up question about uh, Cyprus and Nike. Who, who was your best teammate, Nike? The best teammate. Um, I mean, not, not, not in the. You know, I don't want you to tell me who was the best in the level and level-wise, but who was the best player for you to play with, Nike? The play with. Years? Yeah, I mean, your favorite okay. teammate. Let's say the one that well, you had the best time favorite, cooperating with. That has so many. Like I love playing with Jack because you know Jack uh, Tyreek. You know because they. They passed me the ball, <laughs> but no, yeah, that's, that's their job. Guys. The point guys, was. they were great guys. You know, Palalis, I learned uh, a lot from him. You know, with him being an older guy, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm I'm kill his name, but you know, uh, uh, Trisokas, tr tr well, I forgot his name. He no, he you got his name right. You got his name right. I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Very passionate uh, guy, oh, isn't God. he? He talked. He like you would think that we were not on the same team. He talked so much trash to me. I'm like, man, leave me alone. You know, he say he's the real number 12 and we go back and forth. So him, um, you know, Tyreek, um, Jojo, uh, man, yeah. I can just keep going down the list of, you know, um, teammates, man. You know, I, I can't, mm -hmm. I honestly can't pick a favorite. I have so many. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Let, let's move on a little bit. Uh, I would like to speak a little bit about your uh, not so known uh, destinations. We all know, we all, at, at least for us here in Cyprus, we know you played in uh, Greece. We mm -hmm. were following you now in the Basketball Champions League in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, what about uh, the Czech Republic? You mentioned the second division team. What was that about? How did you end up from, uh, from 2009? Uh, to the Czech Republic, and then mm -hmm. I noticed you, you also played in China. Is, is that mm -hmm. a deal? Mm -hmm. What exactly mm -hmm. was that about? Can you talk, talk, uh, talk to us what, a little bit about your not so known to us destinations in basketball? Okay, starting well, with the Czech Republic. The, the Czech Republic, you know, uh, it was more so, you know, um, I came out of college, you know, I went to a division two, so uh, you know, mm -hmm. my representation, you know, I guess wasn't you know so high at the time, and you know, yeah. he said that he had an opportunity to me for to play you know, ball. And, you know, he told me the money. I can tell you the money. I, I was making maybe $800, $900 a month, you know, mm -hmm. but it wasn't even about the money. It was just about me going over to prove myself and also continue my dream of playing basketball. So uh, I went there. Uh, we were second division and we end up, um, uh, we end up coming second and, and we got to call up the next year to go to the first league. And, you know, we went to the first league and I, I did really well that year. I, I won MVP of the league the first mm -hmm. year but you know just another thing another story is like i remember i was in the second league and i used to go to the first league games and i used to say man i know i can play here and do good and my teammates was you know saying like well it's the reason why you're in the second league you know basically saying like the first league was just so much superior yeah. then you know, okay then second year we went and i won mvp of the league you know mm -hmm. so it, it was um you know it's just it's just just a thing you know just 
just keep pushing, man. I just never mm-hmm. let anybody just tell me that I can't do anything, you know? So, and then um, I end up going back. And then of course, that's when I went to Germany, but in China, China was experience. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a, it was a fun experience at first. I hated it because the food was so different and everything is yeah, spicy, yeah. you know, and I hate to say it. I know this is not mm-hmm. healthy, but I was eating at McDonald's and pizza every day because I, I could not eat, you know, the food. And then, okay, <laughs> later on in the season, I got used to it. But basketball wise, you know, it's funny because my first game, I went mm-hmm. there and I took fit, uh, I took 15 shots. So, you know, 15 shots in Europe, that's yeah. a lot, you know, that's a lot of shots. So uh, after the game, mm-hmm. you know, the coach comes up to me and said, if you only take 15, he said, if you take 15 shots again, you know, we're going to have to cut you. So I'm thinking in my head, like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I did take a lot of shots. He said, no, we want you to take 30 shots. I said, oh, I said, well, I can do that. Okay. I can take 30 shots if you want me to. That's <laughs> so, nice. You know, and so after that, you know, I was, man, it was, we, we started, mm-hmm. we started winning. We made the playoffs because I think at that time we were second to last place. And, you know, the goal wasn't to make the playoffs. It was just to be, you know, and we ended up winning a lot of games and we ended up making a playoffs. So that was, okay. that was, that was good. And, and, you know, um, the mm-hmm. level, of course, it's not so high like Europe. You know, um, yeah, obviously. But uh, then, you know, I returned for a second season, you know, because, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it towards the end. And, um, and also, um, okay, if we're being mm-hmm. honest, it's good money. <laughs> we're going to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> China is known for that. It's no problem. You could be honest with us. Don't worry. Right. Uh, so we, we have a quick, we have a quick, yeah. Oh, no, continue. Yeah, it. you can finish. No, I'm so good. I don't know. Ch- China is China an option again? Maybe at some point later on, or are you still looking at that course, uh, Euro League, course, Euro China, League slot? Uh, China is definitely an option. Honestly, we we have I've okay. discussed with a couple uh, Chinese teams in the past, you know. So it's definitely mm-hmm. an option. Um, yeah. But you know, like I said, my goal is the Euro League, or you know, I, I really like it in Spain, or the Euro League, or stay, you know, in Spain, of course. But don't get you me are wrong. playing in I'm the second over. best. You are playing in the second best league of the world. So right. That, that, right. That's but, I mean, don't, something don't, for don't, for don't get me wrong. Of course, if you know, it just depends on the situation. Like I would love to return, you know, back to Burgos, but it just depends on the situation. Maybe a team in Italy, France, Russia. You don't know. I mean, you know the business. You know the business. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Of if, as of right now, I would say Burgos is definitely like leading because I really like it there. So uh, mm-hmm. Burgos is definitely like my team that's leading um, in everybody. So I would negotiate with them first before I do anything. Yeah. So we have a question from uh, Andonis. Uh, he's a colleague here in Cyprus. He's asking yeah. about, uh, I don't know if you can see the, the question, about uh, that, that, that uh, IAC uh, qualification to the last eight of the Euro Cup. And uh, how did you feel being part of that team, that big Vareze? That's the team you were looking for from Italy. That's that's that that that's one of my most memorable seasons um, till this day. Uh, man, just the team, man. We we everybody had that that the same goal. Like you know, everybody was telling us like, oh, you play this team, you play that team. But everybody was just like, you know what? We don't care who we play. We feel like we can win the whole thing. We feel like we can compete. You know, and I think Coach installed that in this. You know, Coach is a fighter. He's a fighter. Um, Coach Lino mm-hmm. is a fighter. So it was, it was easy for yeah. us to, you know, uh, feed off him. Because I used to tell him stories, like, with Coach Lino. Because, you know, Coach Lino, he's passionate about the game. He's really passionate. So on sidelines, he's – sometimes he's going off on the sidelines. So, you know, uh, a couple of teammates like, oh, he's going off. But I told him, I said, hey, all you have to do is Coach Lino, you know, let him go off and then just <laughs> turn around and raise your hand and say, I'm sorry. I, and I know with me, I'm a crazy player. So I know he used to lose. I need, he used to go crazy with me because, you know, sometimes I take, you know, the crazy shots, you know, but this is like part of my game and mm-hmm. he lets me be me. But sometimes you take crazy shots. And I remember I took one crazy shot and it was just a bad shot. And he just looked at me and I, I didn't want to even look at him because I was like, I know he's like cussing me out just looking at me. But, you know, like I said, he gave me the confidence to, you know, be me. So, I mean, it was easy for us to be a fighter because, like I said, the coach was a fighter. So we just fed off him and, you know, had a very yeah. successful season. Uh, that was a good question for Andonis. And, of course, we're going to stay at Twi because we, we have a message from a friend of yours. Uh, he's introducing himself, obviously. Uh, he still thinks he's better than you. I, I'm, not about, I'm not about to uh, challenge Bayo on that. 
um, <laughs> so how, how how was it how was it playing with Panayotis? Because for those who are, aren't familiar with Cyprus basketball, Panayotis Trisokas is a legend here. He played in yeah. for almost twenty years in high level. Uh, he played some amazing games in Europe with mm -hmm. the national team and with Gerabnos, with mm -hmm. uh, Aik. And um, how was it playing with Panayotis? Like I said, you know. Uh, you know, we joke around every so we always joke around and he'll say, you know, uh, you need me. And I say, no, you need me. You know, we just joke around. But like I said, like I, it's another player I learned a lot from. He just uh, man, he's like he's probably one of the best, like one of the best competitors I ran across. Mm -hmm. You know, he loves to compete. And, you know, like he said, he was playing, you know, Oh, at a you know older age and still was giving it his all, you know, and I feel like, like you know, you seeing that, you know, he's at this older age, but he's still giving it his all, still fighting, you know, through everything, you know, never gives excuses. Um, you yeah. know, uh, one game he play a lot, one game he don't play a lot, but he's still the same guy. He's cheering his teammates on. He's happy for everybody. You know, okay, he's maybe one of the craziest players in Cyprus I ever met, but like one of the like I can say like. You know, we'll be friends forever because I, I, I do respect him, you know, even though he did steal my number. But I, like I said, I do respect him a lot, you know, so. Well, he is older. I think he has first stabs on the number, though, to be honest. He's older. Yes, and, he's and, like I said, you know, and believe me, he used to tell me that he's a legend, even though I already knew he was a legend. But believe me, he used to tell me a lot like I am. Legend. I'm like, I know. I know. But, you know, I used to give him fits. You know, I, I used to. Oh, no, you're not. But yeah, I am. So, you know, but like I said, like he's just a true competitor and. That's why that team was, you know, I feel like that team was so good because, you know, like players like him, yeah. veteran players, you know, we we look and see how he take things, you know, we're like, okay, if this guy at this age can do this, you know, we need to pick up our game too, so. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a message from, uh, from getting the, the name uh, correct, uh, Sabre, Sabre? Yes, that's my, my cousin. cousin. That's Just saying hello, cousin. <laughs> yeah, cousin. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a chance to go back to the States now. Um, the, the situation in the United States is tough, uh, as we all, as in the rest of the world. So how are you experiencing news from back home uh, with all this well, coronavirus? Well, going on? It's, it's from back home. It's actually, I heard it's, the, you know, okay, it's the worst place to be right now, you know, from back home and like, it's a lot of people that's like protesting, you know, the thing because, you know, you can kind of see both sides. Like I'm on the side, as, yeah. you know, better safe than sorry, but you have some people protesting and, you know, sometimes I, I say like, why are they protesting? It's about this, you know, it's safety first, but you know, they get like a stimulus check and this is not enough money for them to feed their family and live off of twelve hundred dollars i think is it or yes so, yeah, so, it's so, yeah. so like i would say like why is these people out here right like doing this but at the same time you know you kind of got to understand like they have to feed their family as well yeah. you know and and maybe they can't and this is why so it's just tough all around me i'm on the side of you know better safe than sorry stay home mm -hmm. you know um be safe you know but you know you have to understand yeah. all sides yeah and uh what's your take about um uh, the situation in america with all this div divisiveness going on and uh as american living abroad uh, how do you feel this divisiveness uh not being there i mean you, you have family there, of course mm -hmm. how are you feeling all these things going on in the states the last few years uh you talking about uh, how do i feel about the virus in the state you're saying Device, oh, oh, no, no, sorry, yeah, I made yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, no, I'm asking about the, the, the states. I want to bring a little bit about America into the discussion. Uh, with the well, the country feels divided. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, for for years now, I'm the uh, we seen this divisive. I don't know if the word's correct. Uh, the, this divide even getting bigger and bigger. So how are you experiencing it while not living in the states as an American abroad? How do you feel? Uh, about mm -hmm. uh, the situation in America today, and I'm not talking about the uh, pandemic. I'm talking about the situation, the right. political, social. Uh, you know, like you know, I'm you know, okay. Of course, like I'm a you know, um, like my p political views is I hate to, uh, you know I really don't want to say it because you know <laughs> people yeah. take it so serious. So you know, but uh, I just feel like you know, um, I feel like it's a little divided. Like you're gonna find a little divided everywhere in every country, not just USA. Of course, it's more in the USA because the USA is more in the spotlight. You know, with it being so much bigger, you know, it's just more in the spotlight. So of course, 
you know, it's more easy to uh, observe. But, you know, like I said, I feel like, you know, every every country is like that. You know, USA, yeah. you know, uh, and with this pandemic, it's not helping it at all. You know, mm -hmm. um, the USA, you know, like they say, land of the free. But sometimes people take that, you know, overboard, you know, like, OK, I'm free. So I'm willing to do this. I can do that. I can do that. And I just feel like sometimes, you know, like mm -hmm. European countries are more like mellow about this thing. You know, U USA is more like. Yeah. I hate to say it, I love my country, but it's more cocky, if you can say, you know, in a way. And, yeah, yeah. You know, I understand uh, what you're saying. Yeah, so, like, with, and then, like, with this pandemic that's going on now, it's not helping it at all. So, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like, other countries, you may have one side fighting one side, but, you know, in USA, you have, like, 20 sides fighting each other, you know? So, uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's different. And then with me living abroad, you know, I just, you know, I, I really don't go through it because I'm living abroad. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I've maybe go home for a month, so I'm just observing it from the outside. So I'm I'm really not living it. So you know, yeah. I can't say too much of because I can't speak for other people that's living it. So mm -hmm. uh, of course, after I retire, like I say, like um, I'm trying to be like you know, uh, I'm trying to be 40 years old when I retire. That's my goal. I think I'm gonna get mm -hmm. it. So when I retire, maybe you know, uh, of course I'm gonna go through it. But you know, all I can do is just pray for the country, and you know, mm -hmm. that's all you can do yeah. at this point. Uh, you're from Flint, Michigan, which uh, for some uh, unfortunate reason, a lot of people know Flint because of the water crisis yes. and everything. Uh, how, could you walk us through a little bit about that? Because uh, uh, I've been hearing about Flint for years and uh, mm -hmm. it never seems to just you know, uh, correct itself or anything. So well, what exactly is the deal there? What, what, why Flint, okay. Michigan is such a difficult position? Uh, you know, on top of the, you know, um, on top of the violence, I hate to say this because I do love my city. You know, uh, it's a lot of great things about the city that people don't know about. But, you know, mm -hmm. obviously people know about the bad, you know, with the water virus, I'm a, I'm yeah. water, virus water situation. Um, you know, it's violence here, you know, um, mm -hmm. maybe like one of the worst place, you know, to be at and everything like that. I don't look at it like that, but, you know, um, a lot of people do. So, but like with the water crisis, tough, you know, uh, a lot of people yeah. have passed away from it. You know, it was a time that we didn't even know the water was, you know, contaminated like that. And, you know, okay, we finally found out, but like, and now it's still, it's not even a plan of getting the water fixed. You know, we still don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that, I feel like that's the worst part, not knowing. So, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely tough times. And then, you know, with the pandemic now, it definitely doesn't help at all. But it's, it was it was tough before, you know, so it's definitely tough times. But it's a lot of it's a lot of good things. You know, we have a lot of we have a, a lot of athletes. You know, we have a lot of people success stories from Flint, Michigan as well. You know, that's not talked about, you know, because of yeah, the water yeah. and the violence and everything. But, you know, it's unfortunate. It's, it's you know, something sad. You know, uh, we all get sad when, you know, hearing about the water and everything and. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, it's just bad luck, and you know, we don't have a plan. So, you know, just like the pandemic, I don't know. Just like yeah. the water crisis, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, I'd like to go back to basketball if that's okay for you. I mean, that's, that's what we do best, and uh, I'm sure what you do best. So, uh, first, let's uh, get a message up from uh, from a guy you mentioned uh, early in the interview from Andonis, Coach Andonis Costandinidis. And he sends you his regards to you. Uh, and uh, one of the best guys, the best player to come to the Cyprus to play. Uh, that says something because we did have great American players come in Cyprus. So that's mm -hmm. uh, and knowing Andonis that he does not, uh, uh, if I might say this bullshit around here, yeah, I'm sure that's mm -hmm. something he means. Mm -hmm. uh, so how was yeah. it working with Coach Andonis in Abuel in that season? You did mention a few like, things in the beginning. Yeah. Like I said, uh, like I said, Coach, you know, he just. He put he put a lot you know a responsibility on the players and you know like you have to come you have to come you know you're getting paid so you know mm -hmm. uh, come to what you get paid for but not only just that you know uh he, he understood the players and like i said like he was huge for me because you know i was coming from a situation where you know i felt like i was treated unfairly just because of my name you know because i felt like you know, I was doing good, but, you know, like a player that had a bigger name came in. So, of course, you know, if you had to pick between this player or that player, they're going to pick him only because, you know, it's safer. You know, yeah. because, you know, if you pick me, uh, you know, maybe the, the the president don't like it, you know, because, you know, you, you know, politics, even though, you know, I can be the better player. But like with him, you know, he that was a time where I was actually thinking about just like, giving up basketball even though i love it 
but then when I went to Apple mm-hmm. Will, you know, he gave me that that confidence, you know, back, you know, the, you know, even though I had high confidence in myself all the time, but I just felt like it wasn't fair. Like I, I had confidence mm-hmm. in myself, but I felt like it wasn't fair because I couldn't control, you know, my own destiny. But like when I got to Apple Will, you know, coach, he, he, he gave me the freedom. You know, like I said, I learned a lot from him tactic wise, because before I came to Apple Will, I was more of a. I can say out of control type players just think score 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 but when I went to Apple well you know mm-hmm. he taught me it's more than just score you know and if you want to play at a higher level you might have to do more than just score so you know like I said I, I like I said I respect coach I learned a lot from him as well uh um you know he didn't return yeah. up well and that was one of the reasons why uh you know one of the reasons why I didn't return also you know because I, I, I love playing for him as well so uh, but like I said, yeah. you know, I have great respect for coach. You know, so, so we we can say that Coach Andonis is one of the guys that put you on the right path, then. Yes, for sure. No, for sure. I was I was thinking about retiring. I was really thinking about retiring wow. after I left Germany, and you know, I I came there, and like I said, mm-hmm. like he just got my mind back right. I was like, you know what? Yeah, you know, I you know because, in this business, is tough, and it's tough because you know, like I said, yeah. you have some great players out there that just don't have an opportunity you know, uh, to showcase their talent, you know, and he let me showcase my talent and, uh, you know, and like I said, that, that jumpstart me. Okay. Well, that's, that's great to know. And it's a nice inside story from your time in the uh, Abuel. Um, uh, what about basketball as, as, as a sport? Uh, it's changed a lot last few years and uh, now the, the game is more dependent on players. So maybe your style. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you feel about the game in total? How are you, how are you experiencing this change as a sports point? Well, I've, for one, I think we can uh, thank Steph Curry for this, you know, because mm-hmm. Steph Curry is the one that he, you know, shoot threes, the little guy, you know, do that. But I think I think yeah. the game, you know, like it's not a big man game anymore. You know, when mm-hmm. I first started, it was more so, you know, you have a true four, you know, a, a true five man. But now, you know, you have big guys shooting the three now. Uh, you know, the mm-hmm. game is more of pace. You know, uh, guards are more value. You know, big men are very valuable. You know, but you know, the guards. You know, uh, is is a key part. I feel like you know, even though everybody is a key part, but you know, the guard play nowadays is really key if you want to go far and be really successful. So, uh, the game has changed a lot. You know, that three point line has changed the game a lot. That's why I say I really think Steph Curry changed the game today mm-hmm. because everybody want to shoot a three now. Like, a three is like a dunk. You know, so like it, it's it's you know, think about it. it's fe- it's stressful. You know, you you dunk the ball, okay, that's great. Two points. Somebody come hit a three. You're like, oh man, <laughs> you know, yeah. even though the great the dunk look great, but you know, the three is worth more. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I feel like for me, it helped me the the way the game transition. It helped me out a lot because obviously I like shooting threes, so it helped me out a lot. So you know, I'm loving the transition of the game. Wow. Uh, what do you predict the future to be of basketball? Okay. Can you make a prediction? Uh, with me or just? No, with the game, with the sport. Uh, like, will this trend continue going on with the threes and with the small guys I think so. dominating? I think so. I, I don't think the, the game will return to the to the, to the the dominant low post type game anymore. I, mm-hmm. I think I think the three, the fast pace, uh, you know, the more freelance, yeah. Uh, I think I think it's gonna get more and more like the NBA in ways, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all all over the world. If you ask yeah. me, I think I think you know all leagues are gonna have the same rules, you know. Um, okay, I don't think the NBA will ever put the rule where if you shoot the ball, you can hit the ball off the rim. I don't think that will ever happen. But everything else, I think, will be pretty similar in the near future. Okay. Um, uh, Thaddeus, I, I'd like to ask you a, a few questions about your personal life. You mentioned your new mm-hmm. family now. You've got one, one kid. Is that it? Is your first child? Yes. Yes. And uh, how has that changed your life? Uh, um, it's just, you know, it's just now you're living. You're not just living for yourself. You know, you, uh, uh, another life, you know, whatever you do is going to determine another, another life. You know, so, you know, it's definitely an eye opener and I'm, I'm loving it to be honest mm-hmm. with you, to be able, you know, me yeah. not being around my son now is just, you know, just killing me, but I love it. I love the, the daddy life. You know, if I'm not playing mm-hmm. basketball, you know, I'd rather be with him, you know, and my family, you know, him and my wife every second. 
you mm-hmm. know, of, of the time. So I'm, I'm loving it, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, he's, he's growing up fast every day. He's doing something different and everything like that, you know, and, yeah. you know, me, I do things that I normally wouldn't do, you know, but like for him, you know, I make myself look, look like a fool, you know, if it makes him laugh and smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I know. I know what you're talking about. And then, what what do you like doing besides playing basketball and playing with your son? What, what, what's uh, your pastime? Your favorite pastime? Uh, I love sleeping. I love that a lot. I sleep a lot, actually. Uh, sleeping, mm-hmm. you know, just hanging out with family. Um, like I said, I don't go out much, even at an early age. You know, if you ask any of my teammates from Cypress, you know, even when I was there, I didn't like going out much. You know, the guys would. It's like, come on, man. You know, I, I never had alcohol before. I don't drink. You know, uh, it wasn't nothing for me. You know, I'm, yeah. I, I guess people say I'm a boring person, you know, outside of basketball. So I don't do much. But the things I like mm-hmm. doing, you know, I, bowling, uh, watching movies, hanging out with family and friends. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that, okay. honestly, that's really it. You mentioned another eight years because you said you're 32 now, 32, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, pushing 33, and you want to play to, to your 40. Well, uh, after that, what's what's the plans? Well, do you see yourself uh, staying in basketball? Yes. In some course. other position? Yes, of course. I want to, uh, you know, coach coach you, you know, uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, also I was looking to being a, a sports agent. You know, just I think, I think okay. my journey helped me want to be a sports agent and to help me use my connections to help other players, you know, that you know that yeah. kind of going through the same thing i'm going through so i feel like my like before i started this i i didn't even you know i didn't even think about wanting to be a sports agent but after this i think i think that's one of the things i would like to do if i'm not um coaching mm-hmm. and uh ho- may- hopefully maybe help somebody not have to go through the second division of the czech republic to get to yeah. where they are now yeah I, know, I prefer I honestly like i say like everything happens for a reason and I was in the second division for a reason, you know, so, you know, I, I don't have no complaints, you know, um, you know, at that time I wasn't complaining. I was happy. You know, I was happy to get out. Yeah, so, of course. But mm-hmm. if I can't help someone to not go second division raw, I definitely would prefer that because it's mm-hmm. tough, you know, when you're a competitor and you looking at other teams and leagues and you're like, you know, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Thad, uh, that's pretty much all the questions I had. And we're already pushing towards one hour of discussion. So I don't know if you want to maybe close with some kind of message, maybe a message to your people, to your fans, to the people mm-hmm. in Cyprus watching. Do you have something you want to say? Oh, first of all, you know, stay safe with this pandemic. You know, we'll definitely get through it. Uh, I appreciate all the years, even now, all the messages from the fans and, you know, my close friends there, uh, you know, I have friends that I call family there you know mm-hmm. so you know i would definitely like i said I'd definitely like to visit and also you know just you know to keep your wine and you know just from you know my my career just keep pushing you know uh keep going you know don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something you can't be something you know uh the only opinion that matters is your opinion so you know just keep pushing you know life goes on you know you're gonna have some ups and downs bumps and bruises mm-hmm. life goes on you Great. know just keep pushing You hear me? Perfect. Thank you, career, and hopefully we'll see you up close and Cyprus okay. as soon as possible. Okay, I, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? I was just, I was just closing, sending you all the best wishes from Cyprus and uh, wishing you all the best for the rest of your season mm-hmm. and the rest of your career. And hopefully we'll see you again soon in Cyprus. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, thanks, thanks for having me. It was, it was lovely. Talk to you soon, Thad. Thank you very much. Thank you.